Clear this afternoon, Donald Trump was arraigned on a New York Supreme Court indictment, returned by a Manhattan grand jury on 34 felony counts of falsifying business records in the first degree. Under New York state law, it is a felony to falsify business records with intent to defraud and an intent to conceal another crime. That is exactly what this case is about. 34 false statements made to cover up other crimes. These are felony crimes in New York State, no matter who you are. We cannot and will not normalize serious criminal conduct. The defendant repeatedly made false statements on New York business records. He also caused others to make false statements. The defendant claimed that he was paying Michael Cohen for legal services performed in 2017. This simply was not true. And it was a false statement that the defendant made month after month in 2017. April, May, June, and so on through the rest of the year. For nine straight months, the defendant held documents in his hand containing this key lie, that he was paying Michael Cohen for legal services performed in 2017. And he personally signed checks for payments to Michael Cohen for each of these nine months. False statement. Why did Donald Trump repeatedly make these false statements? The evidence will show that he did so to cover up crimes relating to the 2016 election. Donald Trump, executives at the publishing company American Media Incorporated, Mr. Cohen, and others agreed in 2015 to a catch and kill scheme. That is a scheme to buy and suppress negative information to help Mr. Trump's chance of winning the election. As part of this scheme, Donald Trump and others made three payments to people who claimed to have negative information about Mr. Trump. To make these payments, they set up shell companies and they made yet more false statements, including, for example, in AMI, American Media Incorporated's business records. One of the three people that they paid to keep quiet was a woman named Stormy Daniels. Less than two weeks before the presidential election, Michael Cohen wired $130,000 to Stormy Daniels' lawyer. That payment was to hide damaging information from the voting public. The participant scheme was illegal. The scheme violated New York election law, which makes it a crime to conspire to promote a candidacy by unlawful means. The $130,000 wire payment exceeded the federal campaign contribution cap, and the false statements in AMI's books violated New York law. That is why Mr. Trump made false statements about his payments to Mr. Cohen. He could not simply say that the payments were a reimbursement for Mr. Cohen's payments to, Sandy, to Stormy Daniels. To do so, to make that true statement, would have been to admit a crime. So instead, Mr. Trump said that he was paying Mr. Cohen for fictitious legal services in 2017 to cover up actual crime committed the prior year. And in order to get Michael Cohen his money back, they planned one last false statement. In order to complete the scheme, they planned to mischaracterize the repayments to Mr. Cohen as income to the New York State tax authorities. The conduct I just described, uh, and that which was charged by the grand jury, is felony criminal conduct in New York State. True and accurate business records are important everywhere, to be sure. They are all the more important in Manhattan, the financial center of the world. That is why we have a history in the Manhattan DA's office of vigorously enforcing white collar crime. My office, including the talented prosecutors you saw at arraignment earlier today, 
has charged hundreds of felony falsifying business records. This charge, it can be said, is the bread and butter of our white collar work. And fraud presents itself in all different forms here in Manhattan. We have charged falsifying business records for those who violated federal bank secrecy laws. We have charged falsifying business records for those who were seeking to cover up sex crimes. And we have brought this charge for those who committed tax violations. At its core, this case today is one with allegations like so many of our white collar cases. Allegations that someone lied again and again to protect their interests and evade the laws to which we are all held accountable. As this office has done time and time again, we today uphold our solemn responsibility to ensure that everyone stands equal before the law. No amount of money and no amount of power changes that enduring American principle.